Max. Project Max. Mad Max. Like most 30 year olds, it's been in a few fights. But having driven this car, of course, it's not lost any of its manly stamina. Not sure what the automotive equivalent of a receding hairline is, but I'm sure this has that as well. That's a broken tooth over a lady in Shipley once. 2002, fell down a flight of steps after 12 pints of cider. 2008, broken leg doing a parachute jump. Just last year, twisted his ankle, skipping across the road chasing a chicken or at least the man in the chicken suit. Then there's the bonnet, which is essentially just a nose job operation that went wrong. Yes, Project Max is definitely the kind of car you'd enjoy having a good chat with down the pub. Wouldn't it be amazing though, if in another 30 years, Max is still kicking about? Yes, but there's only two ways that is ever realistically going to happen. First of all, things like this bodywork here. That rust is going to have to be dealt with before it gets really bad. Till it reaches that point of no return. And then there is the other matter. Looking after the mechanical side of things. And that's where I was glad I actually checked something last night. I was going to take Max home with me last night. And for some reason I thought, I'm going to check the gearbox fluid. The tranny juice the cog syrup and it was a bit low. I needed to see if I had any but I didn't know what type it was and Google didn't really seem to want to give me a proper answer to this it just it was going around in circles like so often happens. But the good people of the MG Rover enthusiasts answered my question what a lovely group that is set up by some fine chap with a beard and the answer was Dexron 2 yeah, so I've ordered some of that. Yep, and then I found out I've actually got some gearbox oil topped up. I'm going to take it for a little spin actually. Half a litre of transmission fluid is all it needed. And then it's got the right amount. And I'm hoping it will change the shifts ever so slightly because from first to second there's a bit of a lump like that. You know that kind of thing. It's not really good for the gearbox. Right? It shouldn't be run low anyway. I've had a couple of automatic cars in the past that don't want to change up into the top gear. And you know, that is when you're heading for disaster. The legend, the legend didn't go into top gear. And eventually, I was driving along big clatter and there was all sorts of gearbox all over the floor. That's because it had broken. And a Vauxhall Carlton, exactly the same thing, except it didn't break. I don't want that to happen to this one. Much smoother actually. Yes, that is better. Sounds more liquidy. Sounds like there's liquid being squished around in the gearbox. Automatics seem like the correct choice when you're stuck in traffic bridges, that's for sure. A dirty van. Nobody's even had the imagination to write some funny slogan on the back. You know how sometimes you'll see, say, a passenger, usually a lady with their feet on the dashboard? Well, with an automatic, you can put your own foot on the dashboard. Yeah, it's very comfortable actually. And because there's no passenger airbag, you have no chance of getting your leg blown off. Hand come Max, hand come Max. Hand and now time for something completely different. I'm in the ZR. Do you remember those trim telephones from the 80s? It 
is time to start the custard missile because I want to get this car up for sale. Now my intention today was to do a sales video for it, a no-nonsense sales pitch video, but by the time I've cleaned the interior I think it's going to be dark out here. So let's do a clean up the interior part of the video. Yeah that's what I'll do. Hang on, one up. I always do this, I start talking about the car and walk away from it. I'm still doing it now. Come on. I wonder how many people have got a yellow car and call it banana or banana boat or banana machine. My name for this car is based around the fact that it's yellow, the custard missile, and it's also suggesting that it must be quite quick. But what other names could I give it? How about Beryl? Because Beryl rhymes with peril, and some may call it the yellow peril. The dandelion gasket machine. How about lemon? Just in case it turns out to be exactly one of those. I like yellow. Yellow's happy. Yellow's sunny. Yellow's the colour of a bee without a uniform. You can't not be happy in a yellow car. That's probably why I don't like gold. Because gold is like yellow that's gone all dull. And then somebody's gone to the effort of making it all glittery. Um, and it just doesn't look happy. I'd really like an excuse to have this as my own car. But I simply haven't got one, so I can't. If I wasn't such a silly man, I'd call this car Daisy. The K222 submarine which is the fastest of all submarines. And submarines are yellow. And if you've got to explain it, you know. Now then, I've discovered a bit of a problem. You see, I am sat in the back of the MG now, and it has these uh, lovely blacked out windows. And you can see as much as I can see. So that makes it a bit difficult to vacuum, doesn't it? I think that means it's a bit too dark to clean up the lemon rocket launcher after all. 